Well, we've had a day. It's been a good day. Thank you, Pete. It's just been a great, great day. Um, I'm glad somebody stayed. Um, <clears throat> this must be unique to Idaho, going late like this in a day that starts so early. Um, so I've been uh, really wrestling uh, uh, now with, I had, I had several things. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to share with you. I mean, I, I had some ideas. But um, after, after the uh, World Wildlife Fund talk, I thought, I, I talked, Gabe cleared this. Is Gabe here? Gabe, you know, he okayed this for me. I said, I said do I say something? Yes. And he said, yes. So I'm going to start, I, I, for, you know, when you, when you back clean up like this, part of it is, you know, clean up batter kind of thing. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, um, I'm going to be the bad guy for a second. Um, because you know what? I have no desire and no compunction whatsoever to feed the world. None. I travel a lot, other continents, other places. You know what? Food security is not about us feeding Thailand. It's about Thailand feeding Thailand. It's not about, it's not about globalization, export, import, or any of that stuff. I have no desire when I walk out my door in the morning to feed somebody in Kenya. If you talk to somebody in Kenya, you will find out that they have all the resources, all the manpower, all the intelligence, all the market, everything they need to feed themselves in, in, in Kenya or Zimbabwe or Somalia or, or name your country. Nobody is hungry because they're resourceless or lack ingenuity. People are hungry because there's some displaced, uh, maybe there's not a road, maybe there's um, not a, there's, there's some um, you know, tyrant in power that's siphoning off all the money from the populace and so it, it, it's created a, a peasantry um, and, and, and everybody's impoverished. You know, you could, you could snap your fingers and double the world's food production tomorrow and not a single stomach additionally would be filled. That's the truth. So this whole notion that I'm supposed to go out and turn my community into a toilet bowl and kill all the earthworms and make 200 pound chickens grow on a half a pound of feed to feed the world is asinine. And the reason that that's important is not because I just want to pick a fight with somebody, but it's because our assumptions speak from our heart's worldview and that shapes the research, the policy, the negotiations, and all the discussions we're going to have. So if we start with, oh no, I've got to feed the world suddenly we head down a very different path than if I walk out my back door every morning and my first thought is, I need to heal this land and love it. See, that's a very different paradigm and sends us in an extremely different path. All right, so that's number one. Number two, I have absolutely no desire to see more machines on the farm. I want to see more people on the farm. I'm a, I agree with Wendell Berry that, that the biggest resource lost in American agriculture is the fact that, and Wes Jackson talks about this as well from the Land Institute, that our ratio of eyes to acres is less. If we're going to love the land better and care for it better, we need to know it better. And you can't know but so much. 
And you can't know it from a GPS positioning satellite with a robotic machine run by a computer in a Fifth Avenue uh, uh, think tank focus group somewhere run by a corporate boardroom a thousand miles away. If we're going to actually caress our ecological womb, it means we must have lovers on the landscape knowledgeable enough to know what this little microclimate needs and what could we do with this bank and what would be good for the fungi under this tree. That takes on-site, localized, real-time information, eyes to acre ratio. That's what it takes. So when I hear somebody talking about what we need to do is, is, have, is have fewer farmers and more machines, I want to just, you know, scream Number three, I have no desire in genetically hybridizing everything as if hybrids are going to create all the answers. I'll bet, um, I won't make any assumptions, but I'll just say, I'll just say that most of us, I think Gabe would agree with this, I don't want to put him on the spot, or Steve, or whatever, the, 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 the speakers that I've heard today, I'm not seeing a bunch of hybridization. I'm seeing very specific functional phenotypes that match an ecosystem in a real point in time that work for them. I'm not seeing a bunch of hybridization. I'm seeing things as wacko as line breeding so that we're actually creating more purebred adapted genetics to a place and time than just hodgepodging homogenized hybridization. Hybridization is not going to save things. And to think that we'd all be starving if we didn't have hybrids is to dismiss the entire presentation that Gabe talked about this morning. You know, that's the point. Huh, number four. I am not interested in specialization. I'm interested in diversification on the farm. We've already got too much specialization. We've got millions of acres of it, from, from acres of, of, of monocrops and single species to, to, to specialists in, in um, educational institutions and bureaucracies that walk around and know more and more about less and less. You know, like the proverbial uh, six blind guys on the elephant, you know, and the one guy that's feeling the leg says, well, me thinks this thing is rather like a tree, and the one feeling the tail says, me thinks this is rather, you know, like a broom, and the one feeling the ears thinks this, me thinks this thing is rather like a, you know. We know more and more about less and less. And I'm a big believer that a lot of our answers are going to come as, as, as we become generalists rather than specialists, so that we can understand holism. To understand holism at all, you have to be a generalist. You have to know a little bit about a lot of things. And our problems come when we have specialization. That's a, that's a, that's a signature foundation. John Eichard talks about this. The, 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 the four pillars of industrialism are mechanization, routinization, specialization, and simplification. And we try to mechanize every job. We turn it into a routine. We specialize it, and we simplify it to where now in the average, for example, uh, 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 processing plant for poultry or, or beef, do you know that the average job in the average food processing facility in the United States can be taught in less than 20 minutes. Which forces people like Wendell Berry to ask the pregnant question, what are people for? You know, it's back to, it's back to uh, uh, Henry Ford who took visitors through the Ford plant early in the century, you know, and, and he was just, you know, ebullient over this wonderful assembly line factory system that he, you know, he's the, the father of modern factory factories, and uh, he was just, just, you know, ebullient about this great thing, and you know what, the only complaint he had every time he took, you know, foreign visitors and tour, you know, business people through his plant, he only had one complaint, you know what it was? I've got to hire a whole man when all I need are his hands. That is a really human affirming statement. 
So no, I'm not interested in specialization. I'm interested in diversity, mosaics, uh, mosaic farms. <clears throat> Biodigesters. <laughs> Do you realize that in order to have, you saw the picture of the you know, big biodigester, what was in the background? A great big confinement dairy. You realize that in order to make that biodigester work, it requires a concentrated animal feeding operation. If you put the animals out on pasture and you're moving them around, you don't concentrate enough manure to run a biodigester. And this is what makes my head explode. You get greedy awards and get little environmental plaques at, at, at fundraising dinners for being green when the technology that you've created is simply to solve a problem that we should have never had in the first place if we had looked at nature as a template. But you see, the problem is that as soon as we deal with the hundred processing food companies to get funding to move it toward biodigesters, nobody can dare to ask to change the whole paradigm so we don't concentrate that much manure to run a biodigester. By gum, we've now invested and built in the technology. We've got research scientists building biodigesters. So by gum, we're going to make sure that those things get filled with poop, whether it's right or not. And see, that's why your paradigm drives what you do. See? Ah, you ready for the last one? <laughs> you see the picture? I've seen this before. We're going to feed cows wood. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the answer... The answer to feeding the world, folks, you get this? Is to engineer a cow so that she can eat wood chips. <laughs> if we could just, if we could just get her rumen, you know, tweaked so it didn't depend on, on grass and just tweak that thing up. So we could just set that cow on the back end of a wood chipper, you know. <laughs> My goodness me. Well, all right, enough of that. So, so uh, Gabe and I had a, we, we had, we had a, a, a karma, like negative energy between us, you know. We were just sitting there, you know, biting our lips and going, so. Anyway, I'm sorry he's not here to hear that. Um, <laughs> maybe somebody's taping it and send it to him. But, but see, this is, this, is, this is why. You know what? This is why I have a lot of, uh, of uh, mistrust of big solutions. Because really, the solutions are the, are the, 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 the compilations of a lot of little things done right. You know, if not a single person in the United States for the next three days went to McDonald's, McDonald's would cease to exist. And all of the, of the parameters for the potatoes that have to be a certain size and shape and everything else gets thrown away and all the parameters for a chicken that has to be a certain size and weight in order to scrape up the nuggets and glue them together in, you know, fecal nugget material. <laughs> I mean, if you read Fast Food Nation, I mean, the, the thing is that, that a place like McDonald's actually defines what agriculture looks like. And so, and so if we don't like what agriculture looks like, we don't need to go do a bunch of jet setting around and sit down with McDonald's, we just need to quit eating there. And suddenly, the box will change. That's all it takes. And that doesn't take regulations. It doesn't take litigation. It doesn't take um, you know, legislation. It doesn't take negotiation. It doesn't even take, it doesn't even take a nonprofit organization. Okay. 
That's just, that's just a pre, pre-ramble. I, I wasn't planning on that. But I just, was that okay, Gabe? I, I couldn't help myself. I just couldn't help myself. All right. 